All praise to Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shah. Now these red dragons understand that it's a difference between the races, but they focus on a uh, sci uh, race science, and they focus on scientific racism to deceive the masses. Oof. Race is a biological fact of humanity. For a long time, scientists made the argument different races were literally different species. Prove race is a biological fact of humanity. For a long time, scientists made the argument different races were literally different species. Skin pigment is really just a matter of how big a particular type of skin cell is. but. Race is real. It's like the sex and gender thing. Race is the social categories we have built around these small morphological differences and the expectations and performances we make in those categories. Just like how gender is the set of expectations and performances we build around our sex. Yeah, there are myths about people with albinism. They think people with albinism have magic in their bodies, so they try to take them. At the time, I didn't at all understand what that meant, but at least I understood why I looked so much like this girl. We both had oculocutaneous type 2 albinism. This is a genetic condition that results in low production of pigment, although with type 2, some does accumulate over time. In addition to light coloring, this creates a high risk for skin cancer, and due to lack of pigment in the retinas, also results in visual impairment. So people with albinism have low, uncorrectable vision. Now, despite this very significant similarity, I had led a very different life than the girl in the picture. I was born here in Chicago in 2002, a healthy, normal baby, and it wasn't until I was a few months old that there was any indication that something was wrong. It presented as nystagmus or rapid back and forth eye movement which is a part of my visual impairment. My parents took me to a doctor who said it was brain cancer, a doctor who said I was too young to need my eyes checked, and finally, an eye specialist who did a scan of my retinas, discovered what was, at the time, no pigment, and told my parents the words they needed to hear. She has albinism. She's going to be just fine. Take her home, and don't worry. Now, my parents knew things were going to be a little different than we had imagined. There would be challenges. In the first three years of my life, I had a genetic specialist, an occupational therapist, and two eye surgeries. If I wanted to play outside, I had to reapply a special brand of sunscreen every two hours. Because of my vision, I couldn't play any sport with the ball. And of course, there were the misconceptions, like you can't be albino because you don't have white hair and red eyes, or if you have a disability, how are you in an honors class? Things of that nature. The girl in the picture was born in Tanzania. I looked away too quickly to learn her specifics, but I do know some general information. Tanzania is among an area of East African nations where it is statistically more common to be born with albinism. It's about 1 in 5,000, as opposed to the U.S., where it's about 1 in 17,000. Being born with albinism in this area is also very dangerous. It is seen as a curse or a punishment to the parents. Children with albinism do not often spend many years in school because they lack the proper accommodations for their vision. It is dangerous to be outside because of the high risk of skin cancer and lack of protective supplies. And of course, there are the misconceptions. Now, we're going to get to the bottom of this racial uh, science, race science or scientific racism because it's an um, insecurity of this nation who's pushing it. You see, when somebody's insecure, they push off their insecurities on somebody else. 
one-on-one -on -one psychology. So let's go to the ancient scriptures of God and get an answer to this situation. Now when you go to Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4, it almost quote identically what this quote she has on the screen. It says, Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him. You see, his soul is not right. And because you got different kind of albinism that's going around. <clears throat> now, this myth ain't just a myth that popped up out of nowhere. It has history to it because it was somebody that was cursed and it went all the way back to Cain. Cain was cursed. Let's, let's get that real quick. Cain was cursed and he was what? A Hamite. You see? He was from Ham. Or so-called Hamite, if you want to take it there. Okay, let's go. Genesis chapter 4, it says, it says 11, verse 11. And now art thou cursed from the earth. You see? Cursed from the earth, which has opened her mouth to receive my brother's blood from that, thy hand. So Cain was cursed. And what, what happened with this situation? When he was, since he got cursed, what was the, what was the results of him being cursed? Okay. Now let's get this mark. I want the verse where it says Cain had a mark. Okay, he would be a fugitive and a vagabond. You see, and anyone that find him would want to slay him. Here it is, verse 15. It says, And the Lord said unto him, Therefore, whosoever slayeth Cain, uh, slayeth Cain vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain. And any finding him shall kill him. You see, that's where that ancient so-called myth came from. Because Cain was given albinism, what they call leprosy. You see, same thing would happen to Miriam. Uh, Moses' sister. But let's see why this girl was born with this kind of albinism that they didn't think was albinism. You see, that is a myth that she don't have albinism. It's a lie, pretty much. That she don't have albinism, it's got to be something wrong with her brain. It's got to be something wrong with her eyes. Let's give her some kind of genetic doctor. But the eye doctor told her, you just got albinism. You see? Because that's what this nation has. She was born in Chicago. Because she is the descendant of the man who was cursed with albinism. You see? And when you go to Genesis, that's when you find out who was her genetic father. And so you go to Genesis 25 and let's see 23 because I got two points in 23. It say, and the Lord said unto her, talking about Rebecca, two nations are in thy womb and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels and the one people shall be stronger than the other people. Okay, so these two people or children was going to be two nations. And one of these nations was going to be stronger than the other nation. 
And so let's get 25 so I can wrap it all together. 25 said, and the first one came out red. He came out with albinism. He was a leopard. He came out with leprosy. He came out with the mark of Cain, the curse. You see? That's what he came out with. You see, them them Africans ain't just pulled that out of the clear blue sky. This has been going on for thousands of years. They understand what's going on. And he said the first one came out red all over like a hairy garment, and they called his name Esau. You see, these people are certified Edomites, and they don't understand leprosy because Esau in, in Jeremiah 49 has been trying to hide himself throughout history. And they change their name, and they hide their identity. They don't want nobody to know that they are Edomites. You see? But they always... The Lord exposes them. Now let's get uh, a situation with this leprosy to let you know leprosy and albinism is the same. They didn't call it albinism in the Bible. They called it leprosy. And that's when you became white as snow. The whole world had pigment in their skin. That is a disease when you don't have pigment in your skin. What is the, what is the hard complication with that? You have a disease when you don't have pigment in your skin. You have a plague. You are cursed. It's simple. Now, when you go to Leviticus, the high priest let people know what the deal was when it came to their skin. Let's see here. Let's get uh, Leviticus 13, starting at verse... Uh, let's start at verse 12. And if a leprosy break out of a boar abroad in the skin, and the leprosy cover all the skin of him that has the plague from his head even to his foot, whosoever the priest looketh uh, at, verse 13, then the priest shall consider, and behold, if the leprosy have covered all his flesh, he shall pronounce him clean that has the plague. It is all turned white. He is clean. You see, his the dark, he don't have dark pigment. His dark pigment has turned white. And see, when you let you know the real deal of it. Where you, you 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 look red like Esau in verse twenty four he say or oh, if there be any flesh in the skin whereas there is a hot burning and the quick flesh that burning have a white spot or somewhat reddish or white you see that means it's pink I don't even know if the Bible got pink in it. They done probably created that word. Uh, that's a good word to look at for uh, the etymology of that word. Because you got it's a reddish and it's a white mixed together. You can look at it and you say, oh, that's reddish. Or somebody else look at it and say, oh, that's white. You see? That's the albinism. That's the leprosy that these people have. And so that's why you have racial, uh, they focusing on this race science. They focusing on this scientific racism because they know they are the children of uh, Esau Edom the nation of Edom and they know that they have albinism and and they know albinism is a certified curse in the Bible multiple people call a curse Miriam called a curse Nahum called a curse uh they turned them white as snow who else? Uh, Moses' hand uh, turned into a leprous, like a leprous, white as snow. They know these things. And they're trying to justify it scientifically, pushing it off on the Hamites and on the children of Israel. There's something wrong with them, and they're closer to the monkey. Plus, when you look in um, Genesis 25 and 23, it say one people will be stronger than the other people. That's why they try to put us 
close to the ape because they know we were stronger than them. We would be stronger than them. And we are stronger than them. They know the, the strength of these people. But for some reason, the, the people have a docile state of mind. So they, they couldn't understand with all this strength, how do you have a docile state of mind? And how do you forgive and, and, and have this loving spirit? You see, they didn't understand that. So they pushed off they misunderstanding and pushed it into some scientific situation but this girl spoke the gospel the certified truth you see and so when you look at Genesis 25 it talks about Esau came out red and then not only that when she talks about the hair let's go to the hair because hair is albinism has a, is involved in the albinism? She said, "Well, why the the people will look at her and say her hair is not white? What's going on? But it's some one thing her hair is. It's one situation that her hair is. Let's go here, Genesis 27 to 11. And Jacob said unto Rebekah his mother, Behold, Esau, my brother, is a hairy man, and I am a smooth man. Okay." How is he a hairy man? Let's get that. Verse 16, he say, She put the skin skins of the kid of goats upon his hand and upon the smooth of his neck. You see, she put goat hair on Jacob because Esau had goat hair. And Jacob didn't have goat hair. And when Isaac was blind, he said, If I touch uh, when I when, when the mother was saying when ja when Jacob touched he, uh Jacob, I'm Salakia, when Isaac touched Jacob, he was gonna feel him, and the only thing he could feel was the hair. So if he felt something different than goat hair, he would think it was uh Jacob, and not Esau. So he. He feel the goat hair, the straight, stringy hair, to understand that this was uh, Esau. And so that's why her hair is straight, just like Esau, with goat hair. She has albinism, just like Esau. You see, all people with albinism don't have goat hair. Some some of these Tanzanian people from Africa, the Hamites, they have uh, sheep hair too, woolly hair. So this thing about oh, um, you know, just because you got albinism, it's not about albinism. You got albinism, uh, just like the China man. It, it, somebody can be born with a Mongolianism, whatever they call it, a Down syndrome, but that don't make them Chinese. You see. You can be born with albinism, but that don't make you a white person. You see, because you are albinism, your albinism is an ancient albinism that you caught from an ancient people that had albinism. And the Asian person, they was they caught albinism from an ancient Hamite, Lot's daughters who slept with their father. When they had the children came out, the children had albinism. I mean. Uh, Down syndrome to to create the the, 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 the the nation of Moab. That's what the Chinese are. So it's the same way as these Edomites. The Edomites are albin they, they 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 have albinism, leprosy, because their father had it. And they father go back thousands of years. Same thing with the uh, Moab. The Moab have Down syndrome because their father had it. Thousands of years ago, but if somebody today that's not a part of their nation have uh, Down syndrome, that don't make them a part of their nation. And if somebody have leprosy or albinism, that's not a part of their nation. It won't connect them. But it's the same thing, you see. And so that's what's going on with these people. They are dealing with lack of knowledge. And people trying to hide themselves. Let's get that Jeremiah 49. 
Cause that I'm gonna end it on that Jeremiah 49 because that's the whole problem. Cause these people know. These scientists and all these individuals know they just was coming up with a way to fool people. We oh I got a way to fool them. I got a way to trick everybody. Uh Jeremiah 49 verse 10. Chapter 49 verse 10. But I have made Esau bear. This is the Lord talking. I have uncovered his secret places, and he shall not be able to hide himself. His seed is spoiled, his brethren, his neighbors, and he is not going to be able to hide himself. You see? So that's what it boils down to, and that's why you're having all this uh, scientific talk when it comes to races. And see, that's another thing with this thing that's in the news now. They they know there's a major difference, and it's a scientifically difference between these two nations of Jacob and uh, Esau. And so they scientifically is going to cater and engineer the science and the drug to affect Jacob and not affect Esau. Plain and simple. Esau is going to jump to, can jump up and get it all he want, but it won't affect him. It's going to affect Jacob because Jacob whole, uh, his whole uh, biology is a reflection of his meddling that he was born with. You see, he's not born with albinism. His lack of albinism affects the rest of his body. And they're going to cater that thing to that situation. But I'm going to leave it there. All praises to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh, Shah, Bashem, Rekha, Kadash, double honor to the elders, pushing the truth. Peace to the elect worldwide. The kingdom is at hand. Shalom.